going to show you in this video is an application of how to find the polynomial equation if you are given some roots of the equation. And here we'll want to find the polynomial equation of the smallest degree given a list of roots. Now, it asks me in this question to find a polynomial equation with real coefficients and the zeros negative 3, 2, and 3 minus i. Now, since my polynomial is asked to find real coefficients, I have to be careful that if I were to set up the polynomial, that I wouldn't get any coefficients in front of the x's after I multiplied everything out that would have i's in them. Now, if the restriction didn't say real, coefic um, real coefficients here, then I would just do the process that you're going to see next with the numbers that are specifically in the list. But because it says that my polynomial equation has to have real coefficients, I need to refer to what's called the conjugate pairs theorem. And for the conjugate pairs theorem, it says if p of x is equal to zero is a polynomial equation with real coefficients. So no i's as coefficients in front of the terms um, as I go through the polynomial equation. Then if a plus bi is a root with b not equal to zero, then a minus bi is also a root. So if I have a root that has a non-zero imaginary part, so the number has a term with an i in it, and I want my polynomial equation to have real coefficients, then I have to make sure that all of my complex numbers that are listed as a root, also their conjugate pairs, it, pair is used as well. So the conjugate pair of say 5 minus i is 5 plus i. The conjugate pair of 2 minus 4i is 2 plus 4i. The conjugate pair of 7 plus 2i is 7 minus 2i. So that's what we're talking about in terms of our conjugate pairs. Since my negative 3 is a real number, it doesn't have an imaginary part in it, the coefficient in front of the i is zero, then I don't need any pair to go with that. Two is also a real number, so I won't need an additional root to go with that to get my real coefficients. But because three minus i has an imaginary part with the negative one coefficient in front of the i, then since I want real coefficients for the polynomial equation, if three minus i is a root, so must three plus i be a root. So my roots that I have here are going to be negative 3, 2, 3 minus i, and 3 plus i to get the real coefficients. Now once I have the roots, remember that's like the values that if r is run through the x's in the polynomial and it gives me out a 0, then x minus r is a factor. And when we say that we have the roots, that's exactly what we mean, the values of x that make that equation true. So they would, if you plug them through, give you a zero out. So if negative three is a root, then x minus negative three is a factor. If two is a root, x minus two is a factor. If three minus i is a root, x minus that quantity three minus i is a factor. And if 3 plus i is a root, 3, sorry, x minus 3 plus i is a factor. And then equals 0 to get my polynomial equation. Now technically there's my polynomial equation, but it's not written out as separate terms. It's in its factored form. So we want to multiply this out. Now, what we're going to do is use the associative property of multiplication, and we're going to group the first two factors and the last two factors when we do our multiplication before we multiply them together. Now, in the first two factors, we're going to want to make sure that we rewrite any double negative as a x plus 3 here and x minus 2. And in the um, fact 
factors that have the comp non-real complex numbers in them, we want to distribute this negative 1 through the parentheses. So this will be x minus 3 plus i and x minus 3 minus i. Okay, next up, we're going to do a little bit of an associative property in that second set of parentheses, but we're also going to multiply out this first set. So in this first set of brackets, we'll have x squared minus 2x plus 3x combined is a plus x, and neg um, positive 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6. And now, a trick with these last couple, it can get pretty messy. But if you use your pro um, associative property and group these as the x minus 3 grouping and then plus the i and the x minus 3 minus the i, and then think about the two expressions in your first set of parentheses and these two expressions in your second set of parentheses. So x minus 3 times x minus 3 is x minus 3 quantity squared. Now the reason that you can do this, and it can help you out a great deal in terms of the ease of the multiplication, is that now you have a x minus 3 times a negative i and a positive i times an x minus 3. So this minus i times x minus 3 and this plus i times x minus 3 they just cancel each other out. So all you have after that is then the positive i times the negative i, which is a minus i squared. Now we're going to still keep what's in our first bracket, x squared plus x minus 6. And in the second bracket, we're going to multiply out this binomial. So x minus 3 multiplied to x minus 3. So if we kind of do this off to the side. If I have x minus 3 times x minus 3, that's x squared minus 3x minus 3 more x is minus 6x, and then plus 9. And then remember that i squared is negative 1. So minus a negative 1 is plus 1. So now we're looking at multiplying our x squared plus x minus 6 to x squared minus 6x plus 10. And when you multiply all of those out and you combine your like terms, you get x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 46x and then minus 60 equals 0. And so this final polynomial equation is the equation of least degree that has those roots. So I'm going to copy this back up in a space next to where those partial list is. So that's x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 46x minus 60 is equal to zero. So another thing that I want to bring your attention to is we were given a partial set of the roots of the polynomial equation with real coefficients. And because there was a non-real complex number in the set, we also needed to have its complex conjugate. From there, since those are the roots, x minus those numbers are factors. And then we multiplied them all out to get our polynomial equation. This is to give us hindsight so that when they give us a polynomial equation, so when they give us an equation such as x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 46x minus 60 equals zero, and they ask us to find 
the roots or the solutions to that equation, what we want to do is we want to find a start of the roots and then get that information and let it help us find the remaining roots. And each time we find a root, then we can factor it out so that eventually we have our polynomial equation factored and then we can set each factor equal to zero and find the final list of the roots. So they're having us do this process so that we can get some hindsight and be able to then carry out solving polynomial equations degree three or higher when we're asked to do that in the future.